everybody, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jack the Mind Sculptor, and this is episode two of Dragon's Maze Spoilers. So uh, this time around, I'm actually going to go over fewer cards, but I'm going to go more in-depth on them. So the first card I was really excited about, and this was spoiled a few days ago, um, his name is Master of Cruelties. So he is the Ragdos Mythic. He is three colorless, one black, one red, and he is a 1-4 creature. But the thing that stands out is, uh, well, the, the first thing that stands out is he has First Strike and Death Touch. This is a very lethal combination. Uh, in any one-on-one -on -one combat, he pretty much wins. So he is a great blocker, and people don't want to block him on offense. And of course, if he was only a 1-4 first strike death touch, he would be terrible. But if he attacks and he is not blocked, your opponent is reduced to one life. So that's a very, very um, amazing and splashy effect. And I mean, I'm sure like the Johnnies of the Magic World are all over this guy. And even as a spike, I'm kind of intrigued at this guy, you know, the possibilities of him. Because, you know, he can, he can defend fairly well. Um, and he is a very potent offensive machine and a finisher. But the thing about him is, you know, at five mana, where does he actually fit and in what deck does he actually fit in? Um, in Commander, uh, the, the answer is actually much more simple. You throw him in the Kalia deck because he is a demon. And uh, if you attack with Kalia and put him into play attacking, if your opponent does not block him, his ability will trigger. Because uh, the ability that says um, whenever this creature attacks and is not blocked, that actually triggers right after blockers are declared. So you don't actually have to attack with him to trigger that ability. He just has to be attacking. And after blocks, uh, if he is not blocked, his ability will trigger and they will go down to uh, one life. And of course, uh, if you have Kalia out, you know, Master Cruelties deals no damage, but then Kalia deals three damage after that ability reduces them to one life. So it's basically an instant win. So great in Commander. But um, in terms of standard, I'm actually not sure exactly where he fits in. It is a very powerful effect. Um, if you throw him like in a Jun mid-range deck, for example, uh, he is competing with Thragtus and such. But at five mana, he is a great blocker, much better than uh, Thragtusk. But of course, he, he dies to removal. Uh, that, that is a thing, you know, especially with Thragtusk around, which doesn't really die to removal because it leaves it behind a beast. And of course, um, he doesn't gain you life when he comes into play. So I'm not sure if he's actually going to see play in standard, but I'm, I know for sure that people are going to try to play with him. He is just, you know, a very uh, cool card. So another really, really uh, awesome card that was recently spoiled is uh, Varos the Scarred Striped. So he is the, the Golgari Maze Runner for three mana, one of which is black and one of which is green. You get a 2-2. Two, two. Um, but the two abilities that he has work so well together. So the easier one to explain is um, you can sacrifice another creature to regenerate him. So that means he's quite resilient uh, at the cost of sacrificing your other creatures. But his first ability, and the one with a lot of text, is really the interesting one. So any creature in your graveyard gains scavenge equal to their mana cost. So this is actually really amazing. So all those creatures that you, that you sacrifice to regenerate him with, you know, they could become fodder and he becomes huge. Um, uh, going along with the lines of Commander, like I said with Master of Cruelties and Kalia, this guy is a great commander by himself because he has the potential to get incredibly big and, you know, when someone does 21 commander damage to someone, they're dead. So he is actually kind of resilient because his ability does allow him to regenerate himself if you have other creatures. Uh, but the thing is, in older formats such as Commander, you will have cards such as Wrath of God, for example, that destroys creature without allowing them to be uh, regenerated. So he's not super duper powerful, you know, he doesn't have Hexproof or anything like that. But he's still a pretty cool Commander, and at 3 mana, he is a very low, you know, initial investment. And um, of course you can combine him with cool cards like a Death Shadow. This is a 1 mana 13-13 creature that you know gets minus x minus x where x is your life total. Of course you can play him, he dies right away, and then scavenge him for 1 black mana right onto Varols. And you know, so all of a sudden Varols is a 15-15 creature. So a lot of cool synergies uh, in that aspect. In Standard, I'm, I'm sure someone's going to run like a Jun aggro deck with Varols and try to abuse Vexing Devils because you know, if they take 4 damage, you can still scavenge onto rolls, and if they don't, they, you know, you get a 4-3 for 1 mana. So a lot of cool possibility there, and I'm uh, really excited about this card. And then with the Fuse and Split cards, uh, we have another card that was spoiled that I really like, uh, Far and Away. So this card is far and away the best split card they revealed. <laughs> Sorry about that pun. I know you've probably heard it before, it's a terrible pun, but I had to do it. So the far part is a white colors one blue where you get to bounce a creature to uh, its owner's hand. And then the away part is you get to target a player and they have to sacrifice a creature. For, uh, and that's two colors and one black, as you can see. Um, so both the, th the key about this card is like both sides are actually really good on their own. Uh, I mean, obviously, they're more expensive uh, effects than they would be if they were just on um, individual cards instead of uh, stuck on both cards. But 
Yeah, so both individually are really good. Sometimes you just need to bounce a creature, and sometimes you just need to make your opponent sacrifice a creature. But when you combine both, what you can do is um, you bounce the, the creature that's worth less, and that's just a tempo loss for them, and then you make them sacrifice the better creature. So a very powerful effect to have on one card. Um, gives a Demir actually some, some power that it doesn't really have. And yeah, very excited to see if, if this card works out. I don't know if people are going to try to make like a bug tempo deck, for example, or you know, bug Delver in standard could be possible because we do have Delver, we do have Dust Mantle Seer, and now we have this card. Um, though the thing about Dust Mantle Seer and this card is like, if you reveal this card, it will do five damage to you because um, its converted mana cost is two and three. And unless they're changing something for fuse cards, um, you know, split cards. You, you combine the converted mana cost when you're taking damage for an effect like um, Dustmantle Seer or Dark Confidant, for example. But you know, um, as with any new card, we'll have to see where it goes, but uh, the possibilities are very exciting. One of the interesting mythics that haven't also been spoiled is uh, the Celestian Mythic, which is Voice of Resurgence. So this guy is basically a bear, he is a 2-2, and he costs one green and one white. And in his text box is a wall of text. So what this guy actually does is very interesting though. So whenever your opponent casts a spell on your turn, or if this creature dies, what happens is you get a Crusader of Audric. That is, you know, you get a token that says this creature's power and toughness are equal to the, the number of creatures you control. So what, what this is, is like, you know, he is a 2-2, but when you kill this 2-2, he leaves something behind. And then, you know, what's even worse, like, if, if this guy is out, every time you cast a spell, you're going to get more creatures. And so this guy is basically built to combat control, you know, because control is the type of deck that likes to cast spells at the end of your turn, or they cast a dissipate, you know, to counter your spells, or, you know, a think twice at the end of your turn, for example. And the great thing is, like, even when they cast Supreme Verdict, it does leave behind a creature, because that creature in, will be, starts as 1-1, because it's the only creature on the battlefield, of course. And the thing is, though, like, this card actually gets better multiples, because if you have multiple voices of resurgences, if they Supreme Verdict, you are going to get, you know, three voice, you know, sorry, three tokens, and they're all three threes. So, uh, it's basically what's called a hate bear. It's still a bear, you know, it's a 2-2 two -two for two mana, but it's really good against a certain archetype, and that archetype is control. So, very interested in seeing where it lands in the metagame, because uh, as of now, it doesn't really fit in any standard decks, because, you know, Naya Blitz doesn't want it, because Naya Blitz just is too fast, and it doesn't do anything against Naya Blitz either, because it's really just a 2-2, two -two, and... You know, it, it might leave a 1-1 one, one blocker, but 1-1s one, don't do much against the Naya Blitz deck. And against Jun Midrange, you know, it will annoy them a little bit, but Jun Midrange is tapping out on their turn, not your turn. So, you know, you're not going to get any added value out of um, the other ability of Voice of Resurgence. A very interesting card. Um, it is Mythic, though, and if it, if it becomes a 4 of in a lot of decks, it will become expensive. But I actually, I actually see it settling down in the, like, a middling range, because I don't think it's going to be a great card but it will be a great role player. So those were my thoughts on a few of the spoilers that have come out so far. If you guys uh, agree or disagree with me, feel free to uh, let me know in the comments. I love discussion. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely be doing more of these as time comes, and I will have a pre-release primer as usual, and maybe a couple more things. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and um, until next time, this is uh, Jack the Mind Sculptor, signing out. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and feel free to check out my other videos.